Good afternoon or good morning, depending where you're at. Welcome to Expanding Your Conference Experience, a webinar sponsored by the International Association Emergency Managers Conference Committee. We offer this as a webinar so that those of you who may be new to the association or new to our annual conference and get the most out of your experience with us this year in Savannah. My name is Dwayne Hagelgans. I'm the chair of the conference committee, and I'm joined today by Crystal Lopez and Peter Perez, our vice chairs, and Julie Huss, IEM's staff conference director. So, Crystal, say hello to the audience. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Peter. Hi, everybody. And Julie. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the conference. Welcome to the conference. You're almost. How about the webinar? Okay. Almost the conference, but we'll welcome to the webinar. Thank you. By the end of this webinar, not conference, you should have a much better idea of how the conference program is structured, as well as how to plan your time while with us in Savannah. And that's very important to us that we're trying to give you tips and hints for getting the, the most out of your time with us in Savannah so you're not you're not aimlessly walking around like I used to do. So please feel free as we go along to ask any questions. You can type them into the the question box and then as Julie sees them um, she'll forward them to us or if it's something that she knows we're going to answer uh, further on in the session we, we might just wait to the end but again if you have any questions anything more specific need more time whatever that is um, just put it in there and at the very end of this you'll get all of our contact information that you can reach out to to any one of us for additional information next slide please All right, so basically here's where we're going to go this afternoon. We're going to uh, go through all the important things like if you're still not registered, why you should register and come see us, and then what's going to be happening, the EMX with all of our vendors, some of our various speakers, conference programming, and then all the other uh, tips and tricks that we learned through the years to help you out so that you get the most out of the conference as possible. So networking, networking, networking. It's what we do, it's what we live, it's what our profession is founded on. And so I think that um, if we can say nothing else, we can say that at the conference, you'll have lots of opportunity for us to do networking with you and you to do networking with your peers, uh, with people within the discipline, outside your discipline. As you all realize, emergency management is made up of a lot of professionals and allied professionals all working together. So I personally have been coming to IAM for more years than I can remember. And I can tell you that every time I go to a conference, I'm, I get new connections. I meet new people. Uh, I also get to, to meet up again with people that I've met at previous conferences. And all of those people form a network that I use almost on a, on a daily basis. You know, if you need something, you meet somebody at the conference, you exchange information and hey, uh, I'm, I'm looking at such and such. Oh, well, I met so and so at the conference, and, and that's what they do. So, the conference is constantly growing my network, and that's why I enjoy coming to the conference. One of the key reasons that I come to the conference and work for the conference committee. So, if you have a chance, take a look at the testimonial videos that are on the IEM homepage under the IEM conference.info to see why a lot of our colleagues attend. So, Krista, how about you? Oh, Dwayne, that's a great question. Um, so I attend every year, you know, in emergency management, we often say you shouldn't be exchanging business cards um, at the time of an incident. Well, this is that perfect opportunity to start exchanging those business cards now. Um, and maybe you just had an incident and maybe you meet someone at IEM and they can be a great resource for you going forward in your recovery. So please, um, feel free to go to a session where no one you know is attending, um, sit next to someone new, shake a hand, uh, go to the socials, um, engage with other folks that you're meeting from across the globe, because uh, there will be international members there as well. And so it's just a great opportunity, like Dwayne said, to network with your peers um, and to more importantly, network with those people you've never met before. Yeah, great suggestions, Krista, especially about go, go, don't go with and hang out with the same group, right? Go go into other sessions and learn other things. Peter, how about yourself? You know, honestly, I keep coming back here, I think, because I don't have friends anywhere else. No, no, I'm <laughs> um, no honestly, it's just like Kristen and Dwayne have said, 
is that the networking is one of the best I've experienced from any of the conferences that I attend every year. Uh, it, it's also funny because I tend to see new and emerging trends in emergency management at this conference first. Somebody will present it. It might be something that we're talking about uh, with a group of people I just met during a break or over lunch. But I tend to see that at this conference first before any other conference or from any other organizations that I belong to. So I really enjoy coming to this one. And you'll notice throughout this webinar that a lot of the conference is kind of built around creating this environment where you're allowed and enabled to really network and talk to each other as much as possible. Great, thanks. Thanks to both of you. Great suggestions, great ideas. So, you know, again, networking is so important in our profession and, and getting to meet people from, from all around the world really has been so helpful to all of us. Next slide, please. So what's happening, right? What, what, what's going to happen before, during, and after? As, as you may know, we have pre- and post-conference trainings and symposiums uh, all included within your conference registration. If you're already registered, you should have been getting uh, notifications of our pre-conference webinars that we hold every Tuesday and Thursday leading up to the conference. And then there's also great training from a lot of our training partners that you see listed there. Also, this year, one of the great things that we have is, is um, you can go to some of the local um, venues around Savannah and get discounts by basically just having an app that Julie will probably explain to us a little bit better later. So in the past, you used to have to take your, your conference ID and walk around town, but you don't have to do that anymore. So for students and new emerging uh, professionals, we have specific events to help them you know, get their, their feet wet in our profession. So we start out with the, the emerging professionals and students on Sunday. We have a half a day event with them on Sunday, leading up to the welcome party, where we have some of, some of our seasoned professionals talking to them about things like this. How do you network? And, and where do we go? And what do we do at the conference? And how do I, I get my, my feet in the, the door of that, that first emergency management job? And then we have a, a lot of networking events. We have the welcome party on Sunday night. We have uh, we have meals inside the EMX so that we can we can network in there. You have the scholarship auction, which you might not think about the scholarship auction as a networking event, but it truly is because I can tell you as you get in there and you start bidding, all of a sudden you're bidding against somebody that maybe you don't know, and all of a sudden the next thing you know you become friends because it's all for a good purpose, right? The scholarship option. So many opportunities for your network. And then of course we, we close out on Wednesday night when the, when the conference comes to an end, then the president's banquet is on Wednesday night. Again, another great opportunity to network. And, and as I mentioned earlier, all the things that we do within the EMX so that you can get in there, not just meet vendors, but meet other people in the profession. Obviously there's always those breaks between sessions uh, when you can be in the hall and, and again, interacting with people, new people, new mentors, new mentees, et cetera. So be there before, during, and after when we have training and opportunities for you to network and continue to grow in the profession. So as I mentioned, we have a bunch of opportunities for our emerging professionals and students, one of which starts us off on Sunday afternoon. So, so we have a whole session, a couple hours for those folks early on Sunday where they get to meet some of the leadership, get some ideas, and then we have this first step mixer. So for the last couple of years, we've been playing Scrabble at the first step mixer. Again, a great opportunity to interact with, with the leadership of the organization, seasoned members of the organization. So when people come into the room, instead of, again, as, as Krista mentioned earlier, instead of sitting with a bunch of people they know, we assign them a number from one to 12, we put them at a table, they get to meet new people, they begin to network with some of the leadership who's also playing Scrabble, and we play a friendly game of Scrabble in which we give away prizes at the end for the winning group. So these events uh, help each of us in the profession, right? They help our profession as a whole, but it also helps us mentor the new people. You know, it helps them to figure out new ways to be creative and imaginative and ideas for helping what our citizens and our communities. So the first step mixer is a way to help the students and those first time attendees begin to network and get introduced to many in the leadership and many of you. If you're around Sunday afternoon, if you get in early before the, the uh, welcome party, 
come on in and join us for a friendly game of Scrabble and introduce yourself to, to some of the, the future of the profession. So if you're a student on this webinar right now, or you're new to emergency management right now, and this is your first conference or even your second conference, uh, you know, this is, this is an opportunity to kind of break through. You're invited to this very special event that is truly for you to help you, uh, you know, start to take those first steps, obviously the first step mixer, to provide opportunities to, to meet uh, people in different organizations from across the country, across the world, as we've, as we've talked about. Um, you'll have the opportunity to really mingle and network with all these seasoned members who represent a wide variety of emergency management professionals. So again, we'll play a game, we'll have some fun, uh, we'll have some prizes, an opportunity to build strong and resilient partnerships across the profession. So a great opportunity to meet others and carry those relationships over to the welcome party that will follow this First Step Mixer. So we're coming out of the first step mixer if you're a new uh, member or new attendee and you're going right into the welcome party if if you've been with us many years in the past you know this is a great time to get to you know meet up with the folks that you met in previous years meet new folks and really get it started off on sunday night as we have uh, a great opportunity to go out and network I think we already have about 1,200 people signed up for the welcome party. This year, uh, we have the pleasure of having a world famous and world award winning barbecuer barbecuing for us. So, just a short backstory um, David Marks uh, runs Operation Barbecue Relief, he travels around the country when there's disasters serving food to, to survivors of disasters and responders. So he uh, put in to present at our conference this year. Uh, I was speaking with him and, and he said, how can I get more people to attend my session? And half jokingly, I said, you should serve barbecue. Uh, he said, well, I'm, I'm flying, you know, I don't have my cookers and all that. Two days later, he gets back to me, goes, I just got to serve barbecue at this thing. How can we make it work? So working with, with um, the staff down at headquarters, David and staff got together and so we have the pleasure of having Operation Barbecue serve us the award-winning award barbecue on Sunday night. He's also going to be a speaker along with uh, Christine Heiser on Monday at 9.30 a.m. in a breakout titled Emergency Management, NGOs, and the Private Sector, a Collaboration Sandwich for Innovation Disaster Feeding. Uh, so he's bringing his whole team to Sunday. Uh, if you have full registration, it's included with your registration. And if it's not, if you're not registered for the welcome party, I highly suggest that you do so. A, a great opportunity to start networking and get great food besides. Well, Dwayne, I can attest the food is great. So don't get too much in a food coma Sunday night because, you know, Monday morning we're up and early. We're at sessions and then Monday we've got more food for you. So we have a lunch and award ceremony um, happening at noon. Um, and it begins at noon sharp. So get there early, uh, grab your seat, grab your lunch. Uh, again, sit at a table with someone you don't know. There's gonna be about eight to 10 people per table. So you have opportunity to get to know a lot of different people. Um, the tables do fill up fast. So don't be that last person in the room. Um, it will be, lunch will be buffet style and it is included in all your registration. So please join us. Um, the nominees uh, and awardees for those who were uh, nominated this year for the awards competition will be announced at this lunch as well. So it'll be a great event. Please join us. And then upcoming, um, we also have our keynote speakers. Um, so we're really excited this year that we'll be hearing from the FEMA Deputy Administrator, Eric Hooks. Um, we'll be hearing from uh, General Stanley McChrystal. Um, gosh, I love his books, and um, it's going to be a great uh, person to hear from. We're also going to hear from uh, Aaron Sutton and John Scrivini. Um, they're both from the state of Virginia. Um, they're going to be talking together um, about some of their recent experiences. We're going to hear from Jeff Dyer um, out of Texas A&M University. He's an adjunct instructor. Uh, instructor uh, focused on disaster preparedness programs. We'll hear from Richard Clark, um, who's the president of the American Meteorological Society. 
And um, from an incredible speaker, we'll hear from Andrea Davis. Um, she is the founder and CEO of the Resiliency Initiative. Um, just a great long-standing emergency manager. And all these folks are going to provide us some incredible information. So uh, look for these plenaries and these keynotes because um, you're in for a real treat. And speaking of our plenaries, um, we're going to have a speaker panel moderated by our own Kathy Clark. Um, Kath, and uh, Kathy is going to be moderating the panel with Paula Buchanan. Um, she's an instructor of Disaster Resilience Academy at Tulane University. Uh, Paul Downey, uh, the director of STOF, uh, Department of Emergency Management adjunct instructor. And Chelsea Sawyer, who's an EM coordinator in community outreach in Chatham County. Uh, and finally, to round out the panel, we'll have Chris Soleil, the Executive Officer for the Recovery Division of FEMA Region 7. Um, so a great plenary um, panel moderated by our own Kathy Clark. All right, so next um, we'll be having our spotlight sessions on Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. You'll notice that our spotlight sessions are a little longer than a normal breakout session. And that's because the intent is for um, us to spend a little more time and go into a little more depth over these specific topics. So we have a great lineup of spotlight sessions this year. Um, you'll notice the career workshop is there for those who are actively looking, whether you be new to the field or a seasoned professional. Um, and then of course our National Weather Service and NOAA are our key partners. We've got our diversity and inclusion, um, also speaking with a, a panel of folks and so I really encourage everybody to attend those. Um, and then next. Uh, one of the other things that is, uh, we started was the EM Vision Talks. And so from our past conferences, our EM Vision Talks is designed like a TED Talk. So they're short um, presentations. And these speakers are selected from dozens of submissions and address key areas in our profession. Um, so all of these folks have spent a lot of time um, but really, you know, they've actually spoken about some of these presentations in a longer format. Um, and so being able to do further research or further pra practicing their field and honing it down into this much shorter presentation to give to you folks is going to be awesome. Um, so these are a big hit every year. And so these speakers will be Tuesday, um, November 15th from 10.15 to 11.45 a.m. And they're also will be in the, the large room that we'll uh, have the main stage in. All right, so the poster showcase, one of one of my favorite events. Uh, I've been working with the poster showcase for many years now. So the poster showcase takes place, as you see, Tuesday morning from 9.30 to 10.15 out on the concourse. So participants in the poster showcase um, can either be in the competitive category or non-competitive category. The competitive division participants <clears throat> have participated in an evaluation process that was virtual last month. And then what happens is they get rated either gold, silver, or bronze based upon their research and their submission and their interview with a, a committee of evaluators. And so when you get to the conference, you'll see that the ribbons are already on the posters uh, delineating where they were and how they were recognized. And then on Tuesday, as I mentioned, during that morning break, the participants will all be at their posters. So if you get a chance, if you're there Sunday uh, or Monday, the posters have to be up by Monday morning at eight o'clock. You can walk around and look at the posters. If there's some things that interest you, maybe you wanna do some research, maybe you wanna collaborate with them, or what, maybe you just wanna know more about their research. Uh, all the poster, um, participants will be there that Tuesday morning answering your questions about their posters and their research. So several of the IEM caucuses and committees also will be displaying the work that they do and have accomplished over the past year. And the reason that we have these posters is to help you get involved in IEM. People often ask us, one of the probably the, the biggest questions we get asked the most often is how do I get involved with, with this committee or that caucus or or how do I get more involved in IEM? And so a couple of years ago, we came up with this idea that the committees and caucuses would, would create posters. And on that poster, it, it explains what the committee does or the caucus does. It, it shows you the contact information for, for the leadership of that caucus. And then it also helps you get a better understanding that 
hey, maybe you want to help on the conference committee, or maybe you want to help with the poster showcase, or maybe you want to be on membership committee, or whatever whatever other committee is out there. So um, again, all the information is on there, um, and to find out more, you can not only um, reach out to anybody on the conference committee, but you'll also see ambassadors at the conference. You'll recognize them by a big blue and white um, uh, button that they'll be wearing, and you can find out more information about how you too can get involved and start networking, reaching out, and getting on board uh, to be a more active IEM uh, member. So we've talked a lot about um, things to do throughout the conference, but there's a lot to do on the weekends as well, leading up to the conference. And on Sunday, November 13th, we're gonna have federal updates from our federal partners. You'll be hearing from FEMA on several uh, different topics as listed here. We're also, you'll also be hearing from our partners over at the Small Business Administration from their disaster recovery arm. Um, so please look at our online program um and check out the schedule and uh attend some of these sessions these this is a great opportunity to have some kind of closer knit time with our federal partners and to be in the same space as them ask them questions um get to understand the programs a bit better so take a take a look at it and as i was uh, mentioning earlier this um emerging professionals you know helping them get their foot into the profession begin their careers. We have this whole afternoon on Sunday starting at 12, where we again have an uh, introduction of some of our conference and our IEM leadership. Then we have a couple sessions for them, you know, how to navigate your career. One of the things I'm, I'm really excited about this year is they have a panel of emergency managers, as you see there, by any other name. What does that mean? There's a lot of people that do emergency management that aren't called emergency managers. So this year, the committee under Michael Tiener has has taken the stance of hey let's let's try and introduce emerging professionals and students to other career opportunities they might not be thinking about because it doesn't say emergency management in the title even though it's doing emergency management and then of course you have the speed networking palooza workshop so again a great opportunity for those of you that are new to the conference new to the profession students uh, if you can get in sunday afternoon to come to this session uh, it's a great opportunity to really lay the groundwork for your, your future uh, in the profession. So speaking of the career workshop, again, it's going to be Tuesday, November 15th from 8 to 9.30 a.m. Um, and the workshop will really show how emergency managers can make themselves more competitive in today's job market. So we all know how careers are changing and the job market's changing. So this will be a really important session for anybody that might be looking for a new role. Um, and so we'll also provide information on finding the right job for your interest, how to outline strategies for making yourself more marketable to recruiters, crafting an effective resume, and discussing ways to prepare for interviews. As an extension of this workshop, um, afterwards, the conference committee has created opportunities for resume reviews during the EMEX breaks on Tuesday in the exhibit hall um, A and B. It'll be near the registration area where you check in. Um, and so just check the conference schedule for exact times. And the best thing to do if you'd like for someone to review your resume is to bring hard copies of your resume for that portion of the workshop. Uh, that way they have something to actually see. Um, and, and if they wanna make notes or edits or anything like that, they can do that on that hard copy there. Uh, speaking of the EMEX, so the EMEX is the showcase of vendors that can not only help you in your profession, but also help support our conference. So in past years, this is really where I have enjoyed catching up with vendors that we have that I've utilized locally or finding a new solution for a project that I'm working on. Uh, many of our vendors will have examples or hands-on displays of their solutions or their products for you to be able to test. The IAEM um, Emergency Technology Committee also hosts the Donald Lumpkins Crisis Technology Center in the exhibit hall as well at booth 539. Uh, it has like a little lounge area with some comfy seating where you can hang out and get assistance from tech experts with apps or talk to them about technology solutions. Uh, this is also the same place where Tuesday and Wednesday uh, lunch will be in there, uh, buffet style. And then Tuesday evening, there's a reception which leads right into the silent auction that benefits the IEM scholarship fund. 
and for the scholarship fund. Um, so these events that are listed here support the scholarship fund and all happen at the conference. And it provide, the scholarship fund provides scholarships through a competitive process to students working towards degrees in emergency management, disaster management, or a closely related field of study. The basket bonanza is a raffle of themed baskets, which are on display in the registration area. Each region creates a regional basket, as well as many other scholarship contributors. Um, sometimes as, as or larger organizations will create their own basket to enter. The I am silent auction, um, which is what I just previously mentioned happens there in the evening time, or sorry, no, the silent auction is actually on display the whole time. So uh, when you get there, people will bring it in. It'll be a table that you register for and you can go through and you'll be able to silently bid on items. And then the live auction is what I previously mentioned there in the evening in the Emacs. Um, and so you'll be able to preview uh, things online or live at the conference in their designated loca locations near the registration area. The scholarship auction starts again at 6 p.m. in the back of the EMEX hall on Tuesday evening um, and detailed information for the bidding, tickets, drawings, all of that can be found under the IEM conference website in uh, the near future, probably in the next couple of weeks. So I know if many of you are like me, you're more comfortable in station boots than you are in heels or dress shoes, but Wednesday night is the time to uh, dust off and polish up those dress shoes and those nice outfits uh, and join us for the President's Banquet and the uh, Certification Awards Program. Um, this is our uh, wrap up of the conference. We end on a high note. Um, if you purchase the full registration, the banquet is included, but please do let us know if you plan to attend or not, so we can make sure that we're planning appropriately for the right number of people. Um, we'll have a toast to our uh, outgoing board and also to our incoming board for IAEM USA, and we'll be recognizing our AEM and CEM holders. Um, and um, so it's a wonderful event. Uh, again, get your dress clothes ready um, and be sure to join us there. And General McChrystal, our keynote speaker that's going to open up our conference, will be doing a book signing on Monday from 1245 to 145. So if you've already read his books, Team of Teams, Risk, or some of his other books, you can feel free to bring them along, meet the general, and have them autographed. Or you can buy either Team of Teams or Risk. We'll be selling both of those at the conference. So if you do plan to buy them at the conference, you have two choices. One, you can go down to the bookstore in the EMAX area, sorry, I can't speak, and you can buy them ahead of time so you have them, or you can actually get in line and buy them uh, in the line to get, get the autograph. So General McChrystal is the author of, of a bunch of exceptional books, as I think Krista said earlier, on leaderships and the challenges in today's world. And so having that opportunity to be uh, there, not only listening to him Monday morning, but then later, having a few minutes to talk to him at the book signing in the Georgia International Gallery at the convention building is an opportunity that you don't want to miss. So we also have a bunch of, of optional events. So there's a couple things. We have the, the friends and families program. So if you're bringing additional folks with you that may not be attending the conference, there's things for them to do. We have a whole list on the website. And then we also have some events that um, such as IEPs versus IPAs. And so what's the difference between an IEP and an IPA? Most of you hopefully, if not all of you already know that, but one means disaster and the other means a, a way of, of making it through a disaster. But both IAPs and IPAs have a long history with emergency manager. So we wanna, uh, if you want, you can join us for this informal evening of beer tasting uh, with your peers. Again, another networking opportunity on Sunday night and your night will include a discussion on beers in which we're gonna have a brewer on location and lots of beer tasting along with lots of networking. So what beer is the best to have in your cellar for the next time at home during a tornado drill? Find out on Sunday, November 13th. Uh, there is a fee for this optional event. Uh, for $50, you get four full beers and snacks. And again, it'll be in the Weston Hotel Grand Ballroom. 
don't be intimidated when you join us at the conference uh, about getting involved or maybe not feeling comfortable in a particular topic area. Uh, we have a lot of committees and caucuses and they all have meetings Sunday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, Monday is held for our regional meetings. So pretty much there's a day of the week that you can join a caucus or a committee meeting or the regional meeting. Um, all people are invited. You do not have to be a current member. You can just show up at the conference. Uh, the doors are always open. And this is, again, one of those other incredible ways to get to network and know people um, and build your relationships, but also build your knowledge in the emergency management space. So do check those out. They'll be available on the calendars. And again, don't be intimidated by the subject or the topic or not maybe being um, too seasoned in the profession. Um, this is the perfect opportunity to get engaged in the profession and get to know people in that space. All right, so the conference program, we've covered a lot already in this webinar and this webinar is being recorded. So will be offered, will be uh, sent to all of you who are registered for this webinar. However, if you wanna check out what we have covered, when it is, find out more detail about anything, a speaker, a session, um, an optional event, you can go to our complete conference program page, which is found on our conference website at iaemconference.info. You can view our program four different ways. You can view it chronologically by day of the sessions by clicking the view program button. You can search for a speaker to see if somebody you know might be there. And when you do search that and you find your speaker, you can find out when they're actually presenting, what day and what topic they're gonna be on. You can search by event type. Let's say you wanna look for special events or you wanna look for all of the emix receptions or all of the plenary speakers. You can search by the event type and find all the things that are listed. The other way to search is by interest area. So all of the speakers that submitted, pick the main interest area of their session. And those are all listed, there's probably about 25 of them. Um, and you can click on an interest area to see all the sessions that fall within that area. You can also print this on every on the page. There is a export to Excel, which allows you to print from any of these pages, view programs, speakers, whatever, and you can see all that's covered there. This is a, a screenshot of the program on the view program page. So you see it has all the dates across the top. I know you're looking, it says Tuesday, October 11th. That was our first early edition webinar. And then we still have some more coming up, one tomorrow on the 27th, and then two more next week, Tuesday and Thursday. And then our conference kicks off on Friday, November 11th. So each day you can click on a day and it pulls up everything chronologically of what happens in that day. And then when you click on a session, like it said, um, this would say keynote leading in harm's way for the general. If you click on that session, that previous page, it'll pull up this detail. And in here, we'll tell you the title. It'll tell you the abstract of it, when it's actually being, although it was on the other page, it will show you here again, the room number it's in. And then you'll see that Stanley McChrystal is, high, is in blue, like a hyperlink. You can click on there and you can find out about Mr. Mc, about General McChrystal. All right, so obviously we don't ask you to carry around your laptop with you the whole time. Um, so we have this handy dandy app. So uh, you can go to the link that you see there at the top, the URL, the guidebook.com with all those fancy numbers after it, or you can use your phone's camera and take a picture of this QR code right there on your screen um, to download this in either uh, Android or Apple. So please download the app ahead of time and build your schedule. It'll allow you to go through, you can look at all the sessions, um, and you can add sessions to your schedule. Uh, the app will also be the most up-to-date version of the schedule because of course, as with everything, there will be last minute changes that are made. Uh, the app has handy facility maps. So of course, we'll all most likely be in a new place. Um, and so if you don't know where you're going, it has facility maps. It'll have presentations from the sessions, contact information for speakers, and it'll also be a way that IEM staff can send emergency messages out to everybody. Um, if you have any questions about the app or how to download it and you're having trouble, just remember to stop by the Donald Lumpkins Crisis Technology Center in the exhibit hall, booth 539. 
Um, so if you have any questions while you're at the conference, find somebody with this badge that says ambassador. Um, and so these folks uh, are attendees just like you and are happy to answer any of the questions that you have or try to find the answer to your question. Um, I can promise you that most likely if you're wondering it, other people are as well. Um, and so it's very important to go ahead and just ask them. Sometimes they're able to let IEM staff or conference staff know ahead of time that maybe something's not as clear or there's not a sign where there should be and we're able to fix that as well. So a few years ago um, at the conference, we started unveiling a coin every year. So uh, we will have the this year's challenge coin for sale uh, for a limited time while supplies last. So I really encourage you to get yours early. They do tend to sell out. Um, we might have uh, a few from previous years if you want to get those as well. But of course, just come by the bookstore um, where we have obviously the books, but of course we'll have the coins as well for sale there. All right, so it's time to figure it out how we're going to connect with others. And so this year, uh, you know, in this very fast paced world in which it seems like we never get a chance to kind of slow down, we're going to slow down a little bit and go old school with what we're going to call an old school social wall. So you're going to see in the conference center a large quote unquote social wall in which you'll see markers and pens and you can go up and you have the opportunity to use our social wall to write your comments and thoughts about the conference, to try and network with attendees. Uh, you know, you can write a note on there, hey, is anybody doing research on this or can anybody help me with that? You can write it on there. Uh, you can say, hey, tonight there's a group of us and, and we're gonna go out to dinner if you wanna join us to talk about X or, or whatever that may be. Um, so we want you to share your ideas and have some good old fashioned fun on our old school social media wall no technology required you can put down your phone for this one you'll have markers there you'll have the paper there you'll see what's happening and it's just a, a fun filled way for us to kind of network in a, in a means in a way uh, before there was technology so <laughs> having said that oops having said that we uh you know we would be remiss if we didn't have new school technology uh you know some of those like like me you know us seasons guys we like the old school technology but we also want to share about the conference so during the conference we want to share all the great events the speakers the sessions with those who who cannot join us this year or for maybe those that are thinking about in future years come and see what we have so by using the hashtag iem22 uh, if you want to, you're in a session or you're you're networking or you're doing something and, and it's really great, you know, please post that <clears throat> to your social media to let everybody know what's happening and what you're enjoying about the conference. And then in addition, if you see IEM staff, you know, post a couple things about the conference during the, the course of the day, you can repost those things to also uh, spread the message of, of all the great things that are happening at the conference. So once you've you posted on your social media, and it can be any social media you choose. Then you go over to the Donald Lumpkin Crisis Tech Center, which Peter mentioned earlier, and you can enter a drawing to win an Amazon gift card. So basically, we're just gonna, uh, anybody that's out there helping promote the conference through social media, you can go over and fill out um, uh, an app a form, drop it in the box, and then we're going to pick three people randomly at the end of the conference and give you uh, a $50 Amazon gift card. So what else do you need to know? Uh, there's a couple more things we need to we need to talk about just briefly with some of our our things we've heard from the past. So you know what's happening with registration, where to stay, and what to wear, which is going to all be covered in the next few slides. All right, so um, if you are, I'm assuming this, some of you are already registered, some of you are not registered. On every page of our website in the top right hand corner, there's a register now button where you can register. You can also register somebody else if you are <clears throat> so inclined and um, you can do that as well. There's a button there, say I'm registered myself, or I'm registered somebody else. If you already registered and you want to edit, you want to add an event that you've seen here on during our webinar, 
um, one of our optional events. You can go in and log into IAM.org, click on your dashboard, go to My Registrations, as it says here, and you click on View Registration for the 2022 Annual Conference. And on there, that page, it will show you all the things that you are enrolled in, session, events, training courses. And then below that, it will show all the available sessions, events, and training courses that you can add. So you do that, and then you want to, once you click on and make any edits, you want to make sure you complete your registration process so it takes that. Also on your dashboard, that's your key to everything. So when you log into IAM.org, there's in addition to the My Registrations button, there is a My Invoices button on there. You can get, you can pay your bill that might still be outstanding. You can get an invoice uh, to submit to your employer. A lot of things happen in your reg on your um, on your dashboard. And on that um, registration page, when you click on View Registration and it pulls up the event, there'll be a button there after the conference to pull up your certificate of attendance that give you the contact hours if you need that for CLE. Um, and I think that's it. That's it. Thank you. Okay, so if you're like me and you're staying across the river from the convention center, um, there is a ferry that takes you um, from one side of the city over to the convention center and back. Um, that ferry will be running an express route starting at 6 a.m., going through midnight every single day. Uh, the exact schedule will be posted on the conference website. Um, so just know that there is ground transportation available from the conference hotels to the convention center um, and that you'll have a lovely experience on the ferry. Now, if you are like everyone else and you're running late to sessions, um, try not to because you need to plan ahead. There will be everyone else attending the conference likely trying to hop on the same ferry. So um, give yourself some extra time, make sure that you're there so you get to your session on time, but there is ground transportation available. And what to wear. Um, so as I mentioned, Wednesday night is that nice night that you're going to get dressed up. Uh, but throughout the conference, we encourage you to um, wear business or business casual clothing. Uh, Wednesday, don't forget to bring your agency um, a logo uh, clothing. So if you have a polo shirt um, or station uh, outfit or whatever have you, um, be sure to represent your agency on Wednesday. Um, but throughout the conference, you can be business or business casual. All right. So on the IAM conference website under the hotel and travels pages, we list all the local dining, tours and exclusions, entertainment, arts and culture, shopping, outdoor activities, events, and information about Tybee Island, which is Savannah's Beach. Um, some of the local tours, restaurants, and shops do small discounts if you have your conference badge with you so make sure you visit this page check it out um, you can also uh, find links to pages of those local places as well such as the restaurants and the tours there's a lot to do in savannah um, so please take advantage of your time there to learn network and have fun as well and speaking of having fun in savannah um, these uh, visit savannah has offered us um, an exclusive discount um, for a number of local restaurants, attractions, and other businesses. Um, so for your um, pleasure and your experience within the city, um, there are savings there available only to us, the IAM um, attendees, and not available to the regular public. So click on the categories on the page on our website or scan the QR code by clicking the hyperlink um, to check out all of the participants and to see where you can get your discounts. Um, and you'll just get your discount by presenting your conference badge um, to all the participating places of business. Oops, sorry, I was having trouble unmuting myself. Um, so this is a great way to provide the conference committee and IAM with improvements or just ideas or general comments that you have. Um, so on every single speaker slide, you will see this fancy QR code. And it is also on signs and large posters that we have throughout the convention center. So every year we ask um, for feedback 
and we do actually read the feedback. It helps make improvements and changes for future events. Those who complete the speaker evaluations and the conference evaluation will be entered into a random drawing for one of three one-year IEM memberships or a complimentary full registration to the 2023 annual conference, which is going to be in beautiful Long Beach, California. All right, and now it comes to the point in our session where we see if you have any questions for us. I don't know, Julie, has there been any questions posted that we haven't answered? Uh, there is a question. Will there be a virtual option for some of the breakout sessions? Unfortunately, we cannot, due to technology, um, do the virtual session. We tried. Um, We've tried for the last couple of years, but just um, with the way technology is in these conference centers, we've not been able to accomplish that. Uh, next question is, how do you sign up for the welcome party? Julie? <laughs> or, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, on, on im.org, um, if you log in to that, you go to your dashboard, and then you click on My Registrations, and then click on view registration for the 2022 annual conference. And on there, again, it will show everything that you're enrolled in. And below that, it will show available. And you just gotta scroll down, you see the Sunday welcome party, click on it and make sure you complete your registration process. There is a fee for that. And only people that have tickets to the welcome party can attend it because they will be taking tickets. Um, how do you know if you have a full registration? I guess I'll take this one as well. If you go again to your dashboard, like I just said, and go to um, my registration, the registration on there, it'll tell you everything you're enrolled in. Um, so if you have on there the welcome party ticket and the banquet ticket, you have full registration. If you register for the conference entirely and not just a day, um, and didn't have some other special um, registration type you have a full registration. Um, so they had, somebody said that they had no longer attending, want to be recorded or available for virtual, and that we've already answered that one. Well, you may want to mention something about the virtual conference in 2023. Sure, so um, that's a great point. So one of the things that, uh, the pandemic and COVID has taught us is that sometimes we can do things uh, virtually when we can't all get together. And so you might remember um, we had a, a, our annual conference was virtual two years ago. And then at, at that point, we started having a mid-year virtual conference because what we recognized was that we have a lot of members who for various reasons can't travel. Maybe it's health, maybe it's financial, maybe they can't get time off. Uh, they can't leave their agency. A lot of people, a lot of us work for small agencies and it's challenging. So, so um, the last two years we've had a mid-year virtual conference. One of the things that the board is working on right now is trying to solidify a date or dates, I should say. And it looks like we're going to be in April. And the reason we're trying to do that is that way you'll know every April on whatever that may be, say it's the, the third uh, Thursday and Friday, that that's going to be our, our virtual conference for those that, that can attend, but also for those of you, like I go to the annual conference and the virtual conference every year because it is different speakers, uh, different sessions. Um, a lot of times we try and get the most popular speakers from our annual conference and get them to present new information at the virtual conference. So it's a, it's a means to help those people that, that can't travel and can't get the annual conference. Um, next question is, will these slides be sent out to attendees? Um, yes, they will be sent out to everyone that's registered for this webinar. We will also be sending the recording of this out to everyone who is attending the conference. Um, <clears throat> so this person hopes we'll have access to review the posters in advance of the conference. And I, I guess I can answer that one as well. Um, I just was working with our webmaster yesterday and I have not looked yet, but on underneath, as you can see right here on this page, this is a view of our conference website. If you go underneath the speaker tab, 
there at the top of that page, there's a poster showcase page. And on there it lists all the participants who are, who are in our poster showcase, including the IAEM conference um, uh, committee chairs and caucuses. And the poster uh, visual image of the poster, as well as the abstract, um, and if the participant did a video, will be posted on that page. So yes, you can look at that prior to the conference to formulate which poster you might want to see or who you might want to ask or, or et cetera. Um, so that should be, if it's not already up, it will be up here in the next day or so. Um, back on the slide. Somebody commented that the IAP, IP, IPA versus IAP was great in Michigan. Dwayne, maybe you can allude to that one, how, how fabulous that was and how well that was attended. We couldn't, couldn't get enough people in the room in that one. Yeah, hundred percent. We, uh, and Julie, if you don't mind, can you switch to the last slide? Then they can get our contact information while we're answering questions. Um, so, so last year, um, we worked with a local brewery, which of course, if you were there, you know, there's lots of local breweries in Grand Rapids. We worked with a local brewery and they had a night and originally it was set up. I think we, we were going to sell 40 or 50 tickets for this thing. We ended up not only uh, selling twice as many tickets, but we had people following us there on Sunday night after the welcome party. And Julie was, uh, you know, we, we were opening up additional rooms and squeezing the people in wherever we could get them. So this year, uh, again, because it was such a great success, so we have Mark Van Slyke, who is one of our members. Uh, he actually, with a friend of his, did the uh, the beer tasting. So you would, he would talk about the beer and what's, you know, what's this beer versus that beer, et cetera, et cetera. And then from there, um, you know, you would taste the beer, they had some snacks, et cetera. And so it was such a huge success, we wanted to do it in Savannah this year. Uh, we were looking at a couple of microbreweries in Savannah, trying to work with them, but unfortunately we couldn't find one big enough for us. And the ones we did have were on the other side of the river, which is, as Chris has said, the side where a lot of our members stay. So that's not a bad thing, except for we just couldn't find one big enough. So Julie uh, worked her magic with the Westin, and we're actually going to have the the event right at the Westin. So you can go from the welcome party uh, right into the Westin, and we have a room in there, and we're going to be doing the the event there this year. Um, the one difference between last year and this year is last year we got tasters. So if you're familiar with with um, like a flight where they were like four ounces, uh, this year you're getting full beers. So when I said four beers, it's not four tasters, it's four full beers. So if, if you're a one beer person, bring bring a friend, you know, bring a, bring a drinking buddy. But um, anyway, it's a great event. It's a great opportunity to really just, again, you're networking with peers, you're sitting, you know, you're typically sitting with people you might not know, or hopefully you don't know, and you're meeting new people. So great opportunity for that. So next question, how do you get professional contribution credit for attending the conference? Um, so if you, after the conference, um, maybe like a week or so after, give it a little time on that, on your dashboard again, under my registrations, and then the 2022 annual conference, there'll be a button that appears there that will say um, view certif um, certificate of attendance. So on that, we'll tell you the contact hours that you get for attending the conference. Um, what is the cost for the ferry? So the ferry and ground transportation are complimentary for conference attendees and the ground transportation will be from every conference hotel. So Unfortunately, if you booked outside of the conference hotels that we had in our block, it will not be, but you may be able to probably next door or very close to another um, hotel that was in our block. You can walk over there and grab on the bus. All the buses will have the IAEM um, logo in the window. And it should be, today we're supposed to be expecting that from um, Savannah Convention Bureau uh, detailed schedule and exact timing and where and the routes all the ground transportation is going and also for the ferry and we'll have that post on the website that will also be sent out to all attendees of the conference in what we like to call things to know before you go email and that will go probably out that week before the conference. 
Um, if you were staying for the weekend after, will the discount card still work? That is a very good question. Um, and I really don't know the answer to that one. As far as the show your badge, I'm, I'm what you're referring to, um, I think it's worth a try uh, to see if it works. They may not be fully in tune as far as when we are exiting the town. So definitely try it. Uh, I can't guarantee that all places will honor it. Um, will the program schedule be printed and available registration? Um, no, unfortunately, it will not be printed. We have the mobile app available um, for people. So um, we just have not been printing. The problem with printing it is, and even on site, as Peter mentioned, the app changes instantly, as does the online conference program that I went over earlier. Um, when you start to print, anything that changes is not captured, obviously. And we used to print back several years ago, and it, it creates a lot of problems. because People rely on that piece of paper for a room location, a, a speaker, whatever, and a lot of things swi switch, even on site, even day of. So no, we're not printing everything. You have to look at the app. And if you have any questions, like, like everybody said before, those ambassador buttons that a lot of people are wearing, you could ask somebody, um, and they'd be more than happy to help you out. Um, so this one says the app is not showing me registered for my pre-conference courses. How do I address that? Um, I guess that's me again. I'm not sure if you mean the mobile app. The mobile app will not show you registered for anything. It's just a conference information center um, to see what you're registered for pre-conference courses. Again, my favorite line I think I've said now, go to your dashboard, go to my registrations, Go to view the registration, and again, it will show you everything that you registered for the conference. Um, will any of the keynote sessions be recorded for viewing at a later date? Um, no, they will be recorded. They're using the highlight reel, um, and sometimes we use that for our virtual conference as well to show some of that as an add-on thing, but they would not be recorded and shared to the general audience. How do you sign up to volunteer? Anybody want to take that one? Is it how do you sign up to be a volunteer at the conference? Is that the question? Yes. Yep. So um, the the easiest way is to go to the website and look for the ambassador sign up. And if you sign up through the ambassador sign up, that will um, get us your information so we can contact you. Like that's probably the best way, right, Julie? Yes, and there's that way. There's also a page on our website called Work Off Your Registration Fee. Um, so if you are interested in volunteering and helping behind the scenes, you can sign up there. There's a page that tells you how to do it. Um, and you can, it's a great way to network with others. It also, you earn $25 per hour towards your registration fee. It's a credit, and it will happen after the conference. They'll credit you back. Um, any advice on the best mode of travel from the airport to the conference hotel? Anybody want to tackle that one? I I think the last time I just got an Uber. It's not. It's what maybe 15, 20 minutes. Uh, but there's. I don't know if they have. But they probably have buses from the airport. I don't know. Does Crystal or Peter? Do you know that? Um. Last time, same here, Dwayne. I I took a a Lyft or Uber or taxi. One time I rented a vehicle because I was just going to need a vehicle due to the nature of the trip. So um, I do think public, you know, using rideshare apps or, or taxis will work. Um, you have to check with your particular hotel to see if they offer a airport shuttle. Um, any restrictions regarding COVID? Anybody want to answer that? Yes, don't bring it to the conference. Um, so we have um, basically the big picture is that, you know, obviously if people want to wear masks, you know, here, here where I live in central PA, there's, there's still quite a few people wearing masks when they go out. Some people don't. Um, so our, our thought process is as we get to this endemic stage that, you know, one, if, if folks want to wear masks, uh, please do. 
and uh, but we're not in we're not we do not have a mask requirement like we did in uh, Grand Rapids. All right. When you download the app, you'll receive an email to verify your email from guidebot at guidebook.com. There's no other identifying feature that's related to IAM. Um, our app is through guidebook, so yes, it would be. If you were getting that, I already have the app on my phone, so I don't get a download feature, but if you're getting that, that would be our, our app. We are using guidebook for the mobile app. Um, I, uh, Julie, I will yeah. say once, once you download it, though, it is um, branded for IEM, so it'll say IEM to go, and it'll have the EM and the logo for that. Thanks, Peter. Do you have to register every morning for the breakout sessions or can you do it all at once? Who wants to take that one? Okay, the, so, I mean, go ahead. Chris. I was gonna say, you don't necessarily have to register for each session. Um, the app gives you the option to check them off and that's more for your scheduling purposes so you can kind of narrow down which ones you want to go to. Um, but I'll be honest with you, there are times where I've wanted to see two. Um, and so I've kind of listened to the beginning of one and hopped over, you know, if it's close by to the a second one, um, you kind of miss a little bit of the information to it that way, but um, you do not have to register per se for all the regular sessions during, you know, the Monday through Wednesday time timeline, if that was the question. Um, if you miss the pre-registration for an event on Sunday, can you sign up late? Anyone want to cover that one or you want me to take it? Please. Okay. Um, for the for all the training courses that are pre and post, you need to pre-register. So the only way to do that is, again, go to your dashboard and, like I've said before, and click through those to get to your the registration for 2022. For the federal updates that Chris was talking about, and for some of our caucus committee meetings, the government affairs have a meeting in the morning on um, on Sunday. Uh, our optional event, the first chair, the first steps mixers, which is for students those new to EEM, um, EM. Sorry, I'm saying IEM, EM. Uh, that event you do not need to pre-register for. Um, the welcome party is a ticketed event, so that one you do need to pre-register for, but only the training courses are the ones you need to pre-register for um, in advance of come to the conference. Um, is there a link for the conference program app published on the IM website, or will it be emailed? Uh, well, it will be emailed. Again, it will go out on that email that goes out to all attendees right before the conference. And we will probably have it on the conference website within the week. I would check back early next week. We're putting some finish with touches on it. If you scan that QR code while we were on this call or you do it while you get the recording, it is live. Um, so if you have the app from before, you can look at it. It's not complete. Um, we're still proofing it, but it is live if you want to take a quick look. Uh, my organization overpaid. Who do I contact to get a refund? Um, you want to email info at iaem.com and Sharon Kelly is our registrar and tell her what you need and what happened and she will take care of it. Um, I registered myself and a coworker. She's unable to view her schedule online or the app because everything is in my name. How can I fix this so she can view her own info? Um, again, you probably want to email info at IAM.com and explain your situation and then she will be able to help you. I might have missed this, but are we getting badges and tickets in the mail and we need to print them before? Um, okay, so that is new this year. Um, we've gone through several different years where we've had them on site, you pick them up, we've mailed them out. Um, we are not doing either, any of those. Uh, we will have at the registration desk um, iPads and you will quickly enter your information in. It will spew out your badge and that's how you get it. There'll be lanyards there for badge holders. Um, so that is what we're doing it this year. We're, no, we're now not mailing out, so don't be concerned that you haven't gotten it yet. 
um, we will be doing it on site. And it's just most, from what I understand, it takes about 10 seconds to enter it in and print it out. Um, some thank yous for the webinar. Thank you for your contact information. Um, what day does the complimentary ferry service begin? It begins on Friday. It's, uh, the ferry service is complimentary the entire time. However, for our, com our conference, they are doing an express route. So it's running every 10 minutes to the various stops. Um, for those of you that were there back in, I believe it was 2016, when the hurricane came, um, there was only one stop working because the, the docks were blown out. However, all three docks are working. Um, so it will go between the three docks, and, three docks and do a triangle on an express service from 6 a.m. till midnight every single day, Friday through Thursday. Um, Oh, yes. Um, somebody mentioned, uh, thank you, Eric, um, that the ferries have to yield to cargo ships. If you've not been to Savannah, they have a river in between where we are on the one side and the other side where all, shall we say, the action is, the hotel, the restaurants and so forth. Um, if a bar, if a ferry is coming down the river, the obviously, um, I'm sorry, a freighter is coming down the river. Um, which is very cool to see because you're pretty close to it and they are large when you're that close. Um, the, obviously the ferries are gonna yield to them. So they are not gonna fight with those big, large freighters. Um, so it might be somewhat delayed if the weather is bad, foggy for whatever reason. Um, it also might be some, somewhat delayed. We've not really had that problem for our morning and our evening time. Usually those ferries, those freighters are coming midday nor we've had any fog, so luckily, um, uh, some of these questions are starting to ask by the badges. Um, so, anybody want to talk about how to register again for the IAP versus IPA event? That's off the dashboard, correct? Yes, yes. So you just go to your login, go to your dashboard. From your dashboard, you look up your registrations. From there, you'll get to the conference, and then you select this year's conference, and then it'll give you a big, long list you need to go down through, and it'll have a check on everything that you're signed up for. And if you're not signed up for that, you can click on it, and then when you complete the registration, it'll ask you to pay that that uh, $50 for that event. Um, they mentioned how you can, can you go over how to get the event app again? So I'm gonna let Peter take that one. Um, so for the event app, once we share the video of this, you can just use your phone's camera app and take a picture of the QR code and it will um, actually just take you straight there for either Android or Apple. Um, if that does not work for you, you can search your app store. So on Apple, Apple Store, or an Android, um, I think it's Google Store. I can't remember. I don't have an Android, sorry. Um, but you would search your app store for IAEM2, as in the number, Go. Um, and that can also bring you to it as well, where you'll be able to download it. The next question is, question is I'm waste, wait listed for the Thursday, one of the Thursday training courses, when will I be notified made in the class? So I am I've been notifying, I've been reaching out to all the registrants of all the training courses, to make sure they are attending this, that course in particular, that's through NDPTC. Some of our other courses through TEKS, you have to pre-register with the training provider. So I have been, I'm now I think I'm my third rendition of emails to those that have registered for those courses to make sure they register through TEKS or NDPTC. That tends to shake out some people that may have registered and grabbed a seat and no longer attending. So seats have been opening up in some of those courses. Um, 
So as they do, somebody gets put in and we will be notified. So yes, you will be notified. Um, if you want to right before the conference, reach out to us or again, look on your dashboard and see if it's populated in case somehow you don't get an email on it and you want to verify. You can look in your dashboard. If it says it's not waitlisted, that means you're in the course. Um, again, hopefully that'll be the same for the EMI courses. You don't have to pre-register for anything. You just have to have your uh, student ID um, and you're good to go. Uh, is the ferry called Savannah Bell's Ferry? Yes, it is. Um, and I believe that is it of the questions as for right now. All right. I'll just say, uh, in case, if you're typing something in, please feel free to type any other questions. I just want to say thank you very much for attending this uh, session, and hopefully we answered all your questions. If not, again, all of our contact information is there. Please feel free to reach out to us. I did see that some of you already emailed us, so that's that's good. We're answering those. And I uh, hope to see you all in Savannah. If we've never met in person, please uh, introduce yourself to Krista, Peter, Julie, and I uh, in Savannah. And uh, the first round's on somebody other than me. But um, thank you very much for attending this. Uh, we appreciate your, your willingness to get on here this afternoon. And hopefully, we, again, we've answered your questions. And if not, or if you think of something later, please email us. Uh, have a great day. Krista, anything to add? Dwayne, echo everything that you say, and uh, just remember, please, please, please use those QR codes to provide us uh, feedback on all the sessions. I can't emphasize this enough. Um, HER presenters ask us, so how did I do? Um, and we want to be able to give them some great feedback. Uh, so please use those, those QR codes that you see throughout the sessions. That's all. Peter? Thank you. Um, I hope to see everybody there. Um, so definitely, as Dwayne said, stop by and say hi. Um, other than that, I hope everybody enjoys the conference. Julie, closing remarks? Closing remarks, thank you all for joining us and we look forward to seeing you. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great day and the rest of your week.